Hey guys, good morning. Um, get ready with me for church while I tell you why yoga is demonic. Okay, um, so I used to be a yogi. I would consider myself. Um, I was into meditation, I was into yoga, I was into all of the things um, until I found out the real about it, right? So some people think, oh, just because, you know, I'm saved now, I'm looking down on that type of stuff. And it's like, no, it's really not that. Like, I'm out here really trying to tell y'all the truth because it had me all the way messed up. So there's these things called um, succubus and incubus, right? They are lust demons and they come in through many different ways. And one of the ways is through yoga. And the Lord revealed me to um, revealed this to me through a dream and I was freaking the heck out this week he gave me two dreams regarding yoga so one of the dreams um I used to be you know into pornography and I wasn't like a I don't think I was addicted I think I was just more so like thinking nothing was wrong with it like oh it's just, just a little porn like you know what I'm saying? just a little something but essentially when you're doing that you are and you're like masturbating you are having sex with the demon that is essentially in that porn star or whatever and those become those lust demons and you're wondering why why am i you know craving to watch this or why am i having these dreams of um people having sex with me and I'm having an orgasm and all of these things in the dream that is you are essentially having sex with a lust demon called succubus and incubus Oh, Jesus. Um, hold on. Okay. So, in my dream, um, the Lord was showing me this, um, this lady, right? And it was like I was watching porn in the dream. But, like, not really. Like, I knew it was wrong in the dream. But it wasn't porn. Like, she was not naked or anything. But she was doing yoga. And she was doing all the yoga poses. And, um, if you don't know, you guys can research this as well all of the yoga poses are stances of demons like that's literally like poses and stances that they do so you are channeling your no you're channeling them and they have now access to you so um in the dream she was doing the poses but she was orgasming it was the weirdest thing and so um i was like whoa like in the dream my spirit man was very uncomfortable um but in my dream, I was very uncomfortable. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is kind of crazy. And so the Lord was showing me that that was one of the entryways that Secubus and Incubus um, got in for me. Because I used to get attacked with those lust demons. So, um, now fast forward, we have another dream about a witch the other night. And she was telling me how... She gets her power from transcendental, transcendental meditation. I'm like, what the hell is that? I only know the word yoga. So when I wake up, and she's like, yeah, you know, I usually get to transfer my energy and pull energy from people. And, you know, embed my um, whatever in them. But for some reason, I can't do that to you. In the dream, she's telling me this. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, because of me, I'm protecting you. So I'm like, whoa, this is trippy. So she's trying to give me food in the dream. And we already know that's demonic. She's trying to give me clothes in the dream. I'm like, no, thank you. Like everything I'm just saying, no, thank you. No, thank you. I got to leave. She's trying to make me cut the string. I don't even know what the hell that means still. It was just a bunch of stuff um, going on. But um, that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that that was one of the ways that Succubus and Incubus got in through yoga and I was just like whoa and so even right now I am clearly rushing for church I look a daggone mess I'm tired he told me to make this video so I was like have your way Lord like I got you but um so I the reason I'm telling my testimony with it as far as me used to like you know be a part of yoga and everything a part of that community um it's because there's no condemnation in Christ. Like, you know what I'm saying? You did not go too far. Whatever you did in your past, it's not you. It's not 
it does not have to be your future, right? So God is the great redeemer. Jesus is the great redeemer. So as long as you repent, meaning turn away from your sins, we all good and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Baby, we good because the devil thought he had me, but I rebuked him, came up in him still a patty. Yeah. Happy Sunday. Love y'all. Very important doors are open that have people under a pact. And it's very important to understand these access doors in our lives and give it a serious importance. Many people participated in transcendental meditation. Many people participated in yoga. And when you do these yoga exercises, these exercises are created to open energy centers inside of our body. And they are consecrated. There is one, by example, that is called the cobra. And the body twists as a cobra. And in that precise moment, there are points inside of you that are giving access to the real cobra inside of you. So this type of exercises along with a meditation are designed to wake up inside of you what is called the Kundalini Serpent. And the Kundalini Serpent has the shape of an S. It has the shape of a caduce, where the symbol of pharmakia is taken from. And these two serpents together represent the Kundalini Serpent. And how this form of magical energy is connected to a spiritual serpent in the second heaven that is called the Uroboro Serpent. So meditation activates what is called the chakras, the points of energy, and they're activated to join your energy with this serpent Uroboros, who is no other than Satan himself. So doors are being opened in our spiritual being. One very important door is in the top of the head. Another is behind the neck in the hypothalamus. Another one in the third eye. Another one in the thyroid. Another one in the solar plexus. Another one in the sexual areas. And another one in the ankles. So all these points of energy are being activated and then we come to Jesus. And we ask him forgiveness, Lord forgive me for having participated in the new age. But it never occurred to us to close those doors. And when those doors are open, people are oppressed with nightmares. They hear voices and they say, oh, but I repented already. Why am I hearing all these voices? Because you left the spiritual doors open. So it's very important to close these doors. And how do we close the doors? Simply by the declaration of your will. We need to cancel all the work of witchcraft through new age. The activation and the way we gave to the devil those chakras or those points of energy. And then we need to cast out these serpents out of our bodies and any guardian that we may have invited inside of us. One of the most important practices in new age is is mind control and mind control is going to tell you that you need to invite what they call the guardians and these guardians come when you start to concentrate in order to have power in your mind but the power is not really in the mind it's rather a spiritual power and you need these guardians that are going to be demons many people invite a so-called Jesus Christ but Jesus Christ doesn't participate with the practices of the new age to enter Jesus you need to enter through the narrow door through the door of Calvary a lot of times you don't know that you're dealing with a sex demon. So how I knew I was dealing with a sex demon and I was infested with one was when I was extremely horny. Like I have peaks and periods of like when I'm extremely horny. And that's when the sex demon is driving in my life. It's like I drive it in my dreams. That's when the sex demon is attached to me and he wants to go find new praise. So basically I'll be so horny. I'll be like, oh my God, I'm so horny. Like I can't think about nothing but sex. Everything I want to do is sex and anybody I see, I'm just like, I could fuck him. He look fuckable. Like everything in my mind is infiltrated with sex. And not only that, I feel like I'm going to die without sex. That's how sex demons are. They feel like they're going to die without sex and they really will. Like literally they prey on people that they can have sex with. They take their energy because that keeps them alive. That keeps them functioning. But anyway, I felt like Spongebob. I was like, I need it. Like I was so goddamn horny all the fucking time and I didn't care who I had sex with. My thoughts were like that. I didn't play that out in real life, but that's how I was. 
and nothing will satisfy you because the sex theme is better. Is yoga just stretching and breathing or does it have any spiritual uh, dangers connected to it? Well, the first part of the answer is no, it's not just stretching and breathing. And the second part of the answer is yes, it does have spiritual dangers connected to it. I'm going to play a clip for you of my episode with Doreen Virtue as we delve into the spiritual dangers of yoga. And I encourage you with an open mind, um, maybe just give the full episode a listen, um, lest you be deceived. Two quotes by George P. Alexander, who taught world religions at Biola University. He happened to grow up in India. Many Westerners who practice yoga today are unaware that the physical positions assumed in yoga symbolize a spiritual act, worshiping one of the many Hindu gods. To a Hindu, yoga is the outward physical expression of a deep spiritual belief. You cannot separate one from the other. Meditation is such a dangerous practice because you are really opening yourself up to demonic entities and you don't even realize it just to double down on some of the symptoms of oppression you might start having nightmares you might start getting extremely confused very doubtful and certainly not wanting anything to do with the lord mm -hmm. and so for the believers out there who are still defending yoga who are having yoga studios, I pray that you would have the ears, if you're one of those people, if you're a believer, to hear what we're saying today. You don't want to be breaking God's law. You don't want to be committing idolatry. Who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I don't know how many people this video is gonna reach, so if you're watching this video, go ahead and share this video out to everybody that you know. A lot of people participate in yoga thinking that it's okay and it's benefiting their lifestyle. But little do they know that they're actually participating in a demonic ritual that brings demons into their life. If you know anybody that does yoga, please share this video to them and let them know that yoga is very demonic and they're participating in a demonic ritual and you're allowing demons into your life to destroy your life. Did you know that yoga is one of the most dangerous things you can open yourself up to spiritually? Most people in the West don't know this, but yoga means union, to yoke or attach yourself to, and the purpose of yoga is to yoke yourself to spirits. A literal five minute Google search will show you this, gurus will tell you this, people who practice actual yoga, not an Americanized version, will tell you yoga is not exercise, yoga does not mean stretching, it is not for the purpose of of physical activity it's a spiritual practice that incorporates physical body movement if you stretch every day your body's gonna be flexible you're gonna have benefits there's nothing wrong with stretching you can stretch your body a million other ways but yoga is specific body contortions posing chants breath works and poses that are literally created to invoke hindu gods and goddesses and channel them and connect and become one with them so every single yoga pose it doesn't matter if you know it or not if you practice believe it every single yoga pose is literally designed to invoke a hindu god or goddess now this gets dangerous because in christianity what i believe what many people believe the bible calls these gods and goddesses demons that's just what the bible says so if you're a hindu and you're practicing yoga you are worshiping your gods and goddesses if you are a christian and you're participating in yoga you're committing idolatry and according to the bible you're worshiping demons i am a christian middle eastern woman i have done yoga and i actually got demons from doing yoga and i got demonic spirits cast out of me one of the most dangerous types of yoga in my opinion is kundalini yoga and gurus will tell you this themselves hindus will say don't do kundalini yoga unless you're ready to go through the rituals you're spiritually ready because it's awakening a serpent a, a snake spirit in the bottom of your spine going through rituals to activate this to get some kind of awakening really it's a demonic spirit possessing your body and you can tell in these video clips when you see people shaking and convulsing and moving their body like snakes this is also what we see happen when we cast demons out of people but in this case the demon is going into the person and you know activating and coming into them and and digging its claws into their life when we cast demons out they will manifest that way too and drop to the floor and slither and then we command the spirit to leave them in jesus name and they're free i pray that this video today blessed you i hope that it encouraged you to do more research into what you're actually practicing there's a lot of practices like yoga like the enneagram like astrology that are very common 
in our culture and even in the church and these things are pagan they have roots that christians believe are demonic and invoke demons and they're not to be played with since making this video a lot of you are very confused and have lots of questions so let's get into it Yoga comes from the root word yug, yuj, yug, which means to attach, combine, or yoke. It's a Hindu religious practice where you're combining your soul to a false deity through specific breath work, uh, mantras, and even poses. It isn't just stretching. Each exercise that you do is worship to a god or goddess. And being that we know that there is only one true living god, which means it's demonic. It doesn't come from God. And I'm sure there's tons of you who have done yoga without intention. Your heart wasn't to worship the god or goddess, but it doesn't take away from the fact that you still actually did it. It's kind of like going to the grocery store and let's say there was something left in your cart that didn't get paid for. And by the time you get to the car, you realize, oh, oops, I didn't pay for this. You didn't mean to steal it, but it's still theft at the end of the day. So if you've done yoga, I just encourage you to ask for forgiveness, ask God uh, to deliver you from whatever demon you yoked yourself to and yeah you can stretch but just don't associate with yoga um, i've only done enough research on this to know what it is and to stay away from it but if you want to do more research and delve you know deeper into it then go ahead and do a simple google search and you'll be able to see for yourself god bless when the day starts before they do anything there's what i know people have copied but they don't know why they are doing it some people but some know why they're doing it it's called yoga now with yoga, every time you participate in it, you enter into a trance, you meditate, and then you enter into what they call a trance. Now, if you are working for the kingdom of darkness, the spirits give you ideas on how to make money, mm -hmm. on how to make a successful mission, right. on how to rule over God's children and things of the kind. Mm -hmm. But now, if you're just somebody who's coping because I saw a musician do yoga. I need to also try it out. People are talking about it on social media. Let me also try it. Mm -hmm. Those ones, when they open up their lives to those spirits, those spirits enter and they enslave them. Wow. So every choice and decision they make is led by the evil spirits and it is towards their destruction. So in the kingdom of darkness, there are those that are working for, for the enemy and there are those that have been enslaved by the enemy. It's either one of the two. So now uh, we were supposed to introduce that idea to people. All celebrities tell you, before I do anything, I meditate. I go and do my yoga practice. They make yoga look good, right. you know? I, I, I first do yoga before I do anything. I read this book. They promote a book from the kingdom of darkness. Oh, and then I go to the gym. These are the lotions that I use. Right. All the lotions they are promoting are from the marine kingdom. And then I have my designer and that designer, the factory or the company is also from the marine kingdom. If you are having wet dreams, you have a spirit spouse. They are very deceiving. They will appear to you in your dreams as someone that you know, as an ex, even as your spouse, as um, someone that you might have just seen in passing that you thought was attractive. They will appear to you in your dreams as that person. They will not show up as the demon that they are because you will not let them touch you. You're going to do everything to stay away from them if they show up as the darkness that they are. So they will show up as light. They will show up to something or someone that you are attracted to to deceive you. They will even show up in your dreams as yourself. That's how they show up. That's how mine showed up in my dreams because after a while he knew that he could not get to me from my husband or my ex or anybody that I might have been attracted to. He would only come to me as myself. So I would think that this was myself in my dream, giving myself the big O and it was the demon. That's why they are called familiar spirits. They can come to you as anybody to deceive you and stay attached to you. They are very jealous, possessive, and evil and do not want you happy. Anything that makes you happy and definitely your marriages and relationships. You cannot keep a man. You cannot keep a woman. You It causes divorces, confusion in your marriage and all of your relationships. It is hard for you to stay in a relationship is another way. Their goal is to stop your blessings. Anything that will cause you success and happiness, they are going to stop it. They cause barrenness, low sperm count, miscarriages, just a lot of darkness because that's what feeds them. How did you get it? How did I get it? I got it from practicing new age, the occult, witchcraft. If you yourself or anybody in your family, even back three, four, five generations, 
practice new age, witchcraft, the occult, you have open doors. They have open doors to demonic spirits. New age, occultic, witchcraft practices have been very normalized. Through things like meditation, yoga, horoscopes, zodiac sign, weed smoking, liquor drinking, yes, all of that, masturbation, sex outside of marriage, any substances that alter your state of mind, mushrooms, opioids, religion, it's spiritual. There are spiritual laws and principles that we must follow to be free and stay free from ancestral demonic curses. God is not trying to ruin your fun. He is trying to protect you. When we come out of sin and give our lives to Christ, he frees us from demonic bondage. It's not about religion. God hates the things that separates his creation, us, from him. And that thing that separates us from him is sin. When we are living in sin, without even trying to come up out of it, without even trying to stop whatsoever, living YOLO, do what thou will, we are away from God. And he hates that. How do you break free? How do you break generational curses? Surrender to God's will. Fast and pray. And ask God to reveal a strategy for you to break free from your generational curses. Come out of sin. If you are not ready to come out of sin, masturbation, sex outside of marriage, yes. If you are not ready to come out of that, drinking, smoking, yes. If you are not ready to come out of that, don't even bother being delivered from these generational curses because they will only come back. You have to take steps towards God and he will take steps towards you. We have to do our part. Yes, Jesus is our savior, but we do have to do our part as well and deny our flesh. Our flesh is sinful. Our flesh wants to have fun. Yes, our flesh is very tempted by all of the devil's tricks, but we have to be strong and keep him up under our feet where he belongs. If you want to trample on snakes and scorpions, you have to come out of sin because there are spiritual laws. Come, come. It is time to come out of sin. Otherwise, the devil and his minions will continue to play you like an NPC. Gang, 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 gang. With regard to yoga, that should not be practiced because yoga, by definition, the bodily positions and postures are an act of worship of Hindu gods. First and foremost, the Kundalini spirit, which is a serpent spirit within Hinduism, which they believe lives in the spine. Yoga itself is a practice to channel the energy of the Kundalini spirit. That should not be practiced by Christians. It's incompatible with Christianity. If you want to do stretches, do stretches that have nothing to do with yoga or its postures. So energy crystals, right? New yes. age crystals. Yeah, you should it never. To have those. You should not have those. So that is incompatible with a Christian faith. Inanimate objects like crystals don't give energy. It's a superstition. If you're feeling energy from them, then that's a sign that something is spiritually wrong. That's me in the corner. That's me in the spot. Like losing my. Good morning, everyone. Here is a sped up version of my 10 15 minute morning stretch routine. Starting off in child's pose, take deep breaths in, connect to your breath, and then begin to take in these cat cow positions. First, you arch your back up, and then you arch your back out press away with the mat and feel free to honestly take some spinal waves this is just warming up the spine neck and body inhale reach your right arm up high as you exhale draw it through again this is sped up but go slowly here really move with your breath this feels so good for waking up the spine lift your knees up two inches off the ground Ideally, you'd hold this for 30 seconds. It's hard, but you know, it'll activate that core. Next, we'll open up the hips through a scorpion dog. Draw your heels to your glutes, then draw your knees up to the ceilings, really opening up the hips, also working your shoulders here as well. Step forward for a forward fold. Let your head hang heavy, maybe shake your head out. You can take a shoulder rinse to continue to stretch your shoulders. I'm all about efficiency, so I like doing multiple things at once. Find a straight back and then exhale, fold. Step your left leg back. We'll come into low lunge position here. I like to twist on both sides. As I inhale, I find a steeple grip and lean backwards, really strengthening the back here. 
As you exhale, find a half split, straighten your front leg, maybe you flex the feet. It's really going to stretch out your hamstrings and calves. I take dolphin here, stacking my hips over shoulders. This is also a really great drill if you're practicing headstands or forearm headstands as well. Walk your feet back towards a forward fold. Let everything hang here. Inhale, I'm rising up to mountain pose. Bend your elbows, stretch out your triceps here, your back. As I inhale, I just take a side stretch on each side, opening up the side body. We have stretched the spine, the calves, the shoulders, the side body. One last forward fold, come into a ball pose and then rise all the way up. You are stretched and ready for the day. into uh, the practice of yoga and I was like this is great it, it the physical benefits benefited me right away uh, I could hoop better I could jump again I mm -hmm. was lasting in the basketball court longer than the my the people my age and I was like my athleticism kept itself so I started practicing yoga it just had gyms and then someone said hey go to a private studio well once I went to the private yoga studio I really started learning about the actual ancient science mm -hmm. of yoga like yoga is to to yoke yes. essentially yoga you are yoke you can't separate hinduism from yoga and you can't separate yoga from hinduism mm -hmm. uh in short all these worship all the positions in yoga are worship positions of hindu mm -hmm. deities so all those years you're bowing down and giving yourself up to these different lords and these different these different gods, and I'm not going to say their names right now mm -hmm. because thank you to the Lord, I keep them at my footstool that's these right. days. <laughs> so that's what, and that got me in, that had me already open, accepting, free, floating mm -hmm. around, especially in Los Angeles. Like it's, it's normal culture out here. Everything is new age. It's interesting, like when you look at, you talked about yoga and um, these entities. I can't stand the way that people allow yoga to be that open door. It, it, this is, they just don't understand what's going on. Like the, these entities are divine beings that have way more knowledge than we do. And they will influence the mind of people to do certain things. And so they have vehicles by which they channel. And so when they create. And so yoga is one of those. So they, yes. And so meditation, breathing techniques, what's happening is they want you to clear your mind and breathe so they can inhabit right and it may not be the principality but it's going to be their their minions unclean spirits so that they can have some control over you so that you can continue worshiping them because they desire to be worshiped they're rebellious spirits that want to take the place of god you know there's a number of vehicles by which these these entities create and then we try to put labels on them that god never created and we don't wonder why we're getting inhabited we're doing it in the name of jesus yeah, yeah but you're you're using a device of the enemy and uh, uh, something that god did not establish or create and trying to put god's name on it it doesn't work that way and again, many people are seen doing this, even in um, Hindu dance, you yeah. see a lot of this. And it supposedly awakens the crown chakra, which is the snake. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So 666 six, 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 snake. Wow. You see yes, it's all look at, interrelated look at for people oh, yeah. who don't understand. Mantras are incantations to the yeah. spirits. Mm -hmm. And there are requests, they are first homage to Brahman, the ultimate deity in their world, um, in their religion. But a mantra is saying, I want to yoke my spirit with you, Atman, you know, um, uh, Brahman, and any other deity that I, you know, subscribe to that I want to worship. And so when you read this, like the first one, Om Sarvasham Sabastir Baba Tu, you know, um, when you read this, it sounds peaceful the way they've trans translated it. Let there be health. Let there be peace. Mm. Let there be wholeness. Let there be celebration. 
but you don't understand what celebration is in the dark realm versus what God intended mm. our and celebration And look how to be. <clears throat> subtle and deceptive it is. Let there be. Who yes. said that? Let there God. be light. Yeah. Right. Genesis. True. Yeah, so you could read this as a Christian and be like, oh, this is just like, you know, quoting the Bible. So these mantras are things that literally we had to memorize and oh. you had to open every single class with this mantra. Wow. You know, you'd have to sing this. And the reason is because you're setting the tone. You're inviting the spirits into the practice and the devotion because you're about to do a seance. Just like starting church with worship music. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And inviting the Holy yeah. Spirit to exactly. be a part of your, your organization. Yeah. I want you to listen to this ex-witch slash ex-yoga instructor tell the dark truth about the practice. Uh, is a Hindu practice. It is the wor the spiritual worship of Hindu gods using physical asanas or poses to pay homage and worship to said Hindu gods. So yoga is a spiritual practice with physical benefits, not the other way around. It is primarily demon worship. It was designed to worship the deities or demons behind yoga. So you can't divorce the spiritual practice from the physical asanas of yoga. So even if your intention, I hear Christians say, yeah, but my intention, yep. you know, because my intentions are pure. <laughs> I'm just stretching. <laughs> intentions, unfortunately, the devil doesn't care about your intentions. Exactly. The devil does not care about your intention. You studied yoga, practiced yoga, you taught yoga for over 10 years. Can you tell us what is yoga? Yoga means to be yoked in Sanskrit. This is an age old practice over 5,000 years old. That is a philosophy. It's a worldview. The, the word yoga means to be yoked. Mm -hmm. So it means to merge, right? Mm -hmm. And to be yoked to whom? Brahman. Mm -hmm. So Bra Brahma is um, the idea of a infinite, the infinite God. The, and you want to cut to a place where you become one with this God. And therefore you also believe that you're God in this mm -hmm. God consciousness. Um, and it involves physical exercises, uh, meditative stances, breathing postures, it's supposed to bring about, you know, more healthy balance lifestyle but the world view of it is very mm -hmm. different and opposite in mm -hmm. fact antithetical to um, mm -hmm. biblical views exodus 21 through 5 and god spake all these words saying i am the lord thy god which have brought thee out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of your fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So any form of worshiping, including yoga, if you all did not know, it is idolatry. You are opening your spirit, invoking demons, Hindu demons into your spirit. And then you wonder why you're dealing with all these different issues, especially spirit spouses. As y'all can hear, many testimonies of women, and I, there's testimonies of men too, dealing with spirit spouses. There's a doorway entry for these demons to come in and overtake you, overpower you, but you are letting them in willfully. So when you're getting into these poses and you're bowing down and you're doing this meditation, you are yoking yourself with these demons. The only meditation we're supposed to be doing is meditating on the precepts, the word of God. Not meditating that evil entities and spirits enter into your body, y'all. So yoga is very demonic, evil, sorcery, is witchcraft, it's idolatry. And interesting enough, when you look into the Hindu poses of these gods and their statues, it requires every position of yoga require you to bow down to it. Where you submitting yourself to these idols, which is a form of a God that you set up before you is idolatry. Thou shalt not bow thyself to any other gods. Exodus 22 and 18, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Look how many women testify that they were in witchcraft or sorcery, which opened themselves up to these demonic spirits and entities coming in. And then yoga was at the top of the list this new age new age like old girl said 
going back four to five generations. This is new age. These are not the gods that they were bowing down and worshiping uh, 2,000 years ago. This stuff is new age. And it's like she said, it's so common. You don't even think twice about what you're doing. Why is it that the majority of our people, if not all our people, as soon as like something's new presented to us from the heathen, we do not even consider the root of it. We don't question it. We don't research it. We just take to it, consume it, and don't even understand what we're getting into or how we could be opening ourselves up to evil or demonic spirits or entities. We never even consider these things. Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go therein. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life. And few there be that find it. So, the direction that everybody going in, where the masses is going, where the world is going, usually that's the wrong way to go. That's that's not the way to go. Uh, it's the way that a few people choose. That be the path to take. But what everybody else is doing, we know it's not right, y'all. We experience, we just know. That being said, we have to acknowledge our sins, repent of our sins, return back.